Welcome to The Apartment Guys, where we dive deep into all things multifamily investing. Our mission is to educate, inspire, and empower real estate investors to reach their highest potential. Each week, host Tate Seamer interviews high-level guests from all over the industry who are sure to bring valuable, actionable ideas that will propel your career to the next level. Whether you're just starting out or a seasoned investor, you are in the right place. And now your host, The Apartment Guy, Tate Seamer. Welcome everybody to The Apartment Guy and Gal Show, a subsidiary of The Apartment Guys podcast. This is uh, one of those special episodes that we're just launching where uh, my trusted and wonderful partner, Chelsea Garber, is co-hosting with me and we're going to dive into some really valuable stuff. Chelsea, I'm really excited about this. Yeah, likewise. Good good to be here and uh, taking the stage with you. Yeah, yeah. No, this is great. And uh, I, I love bringing you to our listener base because you have a, a natural knack for making things easy to understand for, you know, and this is, this business is not always a hundred percent like black and white, intuitive, easy to understand. There's a lot of nuances and complexities and deals. And, and I think you do a great job of, of talking to investors and, you know, all of our property managers, all of our, all of our people about what we're doing and, and how we're doing it. So kudos to you on that. What we're going to talk about today and this episode, and also in the next episode, this is going to be a two-part series and two, two relatively short, but powerful episodes on the six steps to getting your first deal. So if you are an aspiring multifamily investor, Michael Blanc talks a lot about the law of the first deal, right? And we, we talk about it a lot on the, sh the show. It's such an important step in your career because once you get it done, things really change and start happening for you. And, and yet it's, it's difficult to get the first one done, right? Because you don't have a track record necessarily yet. Uh, maybe you don't have all the resources in line to do it. And it's also ultra competitive right now to find deals. So, um, so we thought we would just kind of go through from our perspective, the six basic steps to getting to your first deal. And uh, we're going to share a little bit from our experiences in each of these steps and why they're important and, and kind of what to do, like action, really actionable mm -hmm. tips that are going to come from this. So, um, yeah, Chels. Yep. Well, I'm excited to dive in. I think, um, you know, we have a lot to share from our personal experiences, some, some wisdom, some to do's and not to do's and this business, you're just, I remember getting started and it's putting one foot in front of the other every day. And kind of you think about it as an iceberg, right? You only see the tip and, and all of everybody who's, you know, maybe doing deals left and right. And you're wondering how, how can we get there? And 90% of the icebergs underwater and you're building the foundation to get to that first deal. And once yep. you get there, it, you, you get on the rocket ship and it's super exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let's, let's just jump right in here and talk about step one and when Chelsea and I put this list together, both of us agreed that getting a mentor is a really great step one, uh, no matter what you, th how you think you're going to do it. If you're going to raise capital or if you're going to find deals or both, um, you know, or even invest passively, getting a mentor in the space is massive. And, you know, this, this whole game is about leverage, right? And you're leveraging money, you're leveraging time, you're leveraging other people's money and resources and time and work and leverage other people's mistakes is, is kind of how I look at this, like any good mentorship program. And Chelsea's going to talk about hers, the one she did in a minute, but it, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna put you years ahead of where you would be if you just started out on your own. Uh, even if you spent all day, every day in YouTube university and everything else, digital, a uh, dedicated mentor is going to make sure that you don't make any real critical errors or any critical errors. And they're going to really take a personal vested interest in you and what you're trying to achieve. So Chelsea is 
as good as she is at this business because, it, well, because she's Chelsea, but also I think largely because of, of what you did with the Michael Blanc program. You want to talk about that? Yeah, no, definitely. And I, I think not only ourselves, but everybody that we know within this industry that has gotten to where they are has, has been with a mentor. I, I can't name one person that hasn't had a mentor. Um, so it's absolutely crucial and it's an investment. And if you're serious about the business, you'll, you know, you'll make that investment um, and, and find a good, good fit. So I was a student of Michael Blanc's mentorship. This is back in 2019. There's a lot of different mentorship groups out there. So I'll start by saying that just educate yourself. Most of these groups have podcasts, they books, uh, YouTube videos, kind of just see who you jive with, get to know them and their business model and how they talk about their programs and, and do your own due diligence. Like I'm not here to sell anybody's mentorship program, like anything else that is extremely valuable. They're, they're not inexpensive. So um, with that being said, I really liked Michael Blanc's mentorship reason, mentorship program for a couple of reasons. Although you don't work directly with Michael, you work one-on-one -on -one with a mentor on his team. Mm -hmm. And that mentor literally walks you through steps A through Z to investing in multifamily. Everything from how to get started, you know, what markets do you want to invest in? How do you underwrite? There's so much that goes into it. And these are, you know, this was over the course of the year, this program, by the way, but meeting with somebody regularly and understanding the technicalities of multifamily is absolutely imperative. Um, so not only do you get access to their wisdom and knowledge and learn from their mistakes, they're really there to be on your team so that when you go to put these projects together, you have all of the tools and resources that you need. And it could really help you from making some pretty major errors. Um, I personally felt that if I was going to confidently invest with other people's money and my own, I really wanted to, it was money well spent to have this person on my team. And also part of that, aside from just having the one-on-one -on -one mentor, you get then access to a community of people, like-minded people who are in the same boat, doing the same things and yeah. share resources. There, there's an abundance mindset within this space. And most of these mentorship programs will definitely, you'll feel that. So it, it's really great. Uh, Michael Blanc also, like many of these others, you know, Joe Fairless, uh, Jake and Gino, like these people, um, not only do they have these programs, but they put on really big events throughout the year right. that industry leaders come to and speak at. Yep. So as much as it is important to be one-on-one -on -one with your mentor, to get out there and network, that's where really the magic happens. I mean, Tate, yep. that, that's where Tate and I met. Yeah. We met at the Michael Blanc event uh, that he puts on every July in Dallas uh, called Dealmaker Live. By the way, important to note, we are, we are not sponsored by any of the resources we're mentioning, and we have no official relationship with them. Hopefully they, they don't mind us promoting them, but <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> think they would. But uh, Rod Cleef is another one that comes to mind. He's got a, a, a very reputable, uh, successful mentorship program. Charles Dobbins is an SEC attorney. He's got one. So uh, there's lots to choose from. And you know, Chelsea ha has had a, a very good experience with Michael Blanc. Um, Jake and Gino's program is very similar where you get your own personal coach. It's actually a two-year program, which I think is interesting and valuable. And they have a really robust community of active investors, people, operators, passive investors, people that are doing the business. And that is so crucial. I'm so glad you brought that up because getting a mentor and getting a community at the same time is like, that's money. And so consider doing those now, like Chelsea said, they're not cheap and but they're extremely valuable so if you can make the investment in that and yourself and in your business do it but there's other ways of of establishing mentorship relationships that are more maybe organic or um you know just kind of in the course of doing business but i do think that there's a lot to be said for the official relationship of a hired coach that you got you have an a very clear understanding between each other of what you're trying to do and they're committed to you and they are successful when you're successful and 
that sort of thing. So, you know, we, we did the Corey Peterson, uh, coaching mastermind program, which it was really a mentorship program. It was largely C Corey coaching all of us, 15 or so teams in the, in the group. So it was, it was an intimate program. Uh, it included like, like you were talking about multiple annual events that we went to and, and masterminded and learned. I spent a full day with just Corey one-on-one -on -one and he really opened up his textbook and showed me exactly how he does the business. And he also was willing to partner with us if we found a deal and that we were able to leverage his track record in our credibility kit. And if you don't know what a credibility kit is, email me at tate at glequitygroup.com and I'll, I'll email you ours. The credibility kit is a key part of your business, at, no matter where you are. If you're just starting out, like it's super important and you want to uh, leverage other people's experience, track record, portfolio, et cetera, in that credibility kit. And we'll talk about that in just a second when we talk a little bit more about partnership. But uh, the, the mentorship thing, you know, it gave us a ton of confidence to go after deals. That was the bottom line was it, it started us into the deal finding mode a lot faster than we otherwise would have been. So I would say in addition to that, into those resources, there's, there's a lot of documents that come along with, with multifamily as far as getting, getting an offer in. Um, so aside from mastering an underwriting tool, which is going to be the Mm -hmm. sort of, I would say like the highlight of a mentorship program is that's step one. Uh, uh, first you find a deal, of course, but learning how to underwrite is quite possibly the most critical part of this business. Um, it is what determines if a deal works or it doesn't work. So uh, having somebody help you with the underwriting. And then additionally, usually these mentorship programs have like vaults of information and documents, right. template LOIs, right. ESA, purchase sale agreements, um, yep. you know, how to speak to brokers, like, you know, scripts, tools, like, yeah, scripts, stuff like, you know, this, this is powerful information that a lot of people put together and have mastered. So there's no need to reinvent it. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. So step two that we identified, and I would say step two and three, you could, you're kind of doing simultaneously, but step two is to start to identify a market or maybe two markets at the most that you want to start becoming an expert in. And this could be your home market, uh, where you live. Uh, that's, there's a lot of advantages to that. If you happen to live in a, in a thriving uh, market that has good deals and appreciation and great cash flow and et cetera, then by all means, start with your home market because you know the neighborhoods you know, people in the market that you probably have resources in the way of investors and brokers and those sorts of people that are important. Um, and I would recommend listening to uh, the po Apartment Guys podcast episode with Neil Bawa on this subject, because he is really known to be the market analyt analytics expert mm -hmm. and really lays out like what's going on right now. Um, on an area by area basis, city by city, he really gets deep into it. And he also has great educational programs on this program, uh, on this subject, identifying a market, analyzing a market. And you can go to multifamilyu.com, uh, the letter U, and uh, find his free resources and webinar recordings and everything else. Neil's a friend and again, not a sponsor, but uh, we love Neil and Anna, his his partner. So I would I would add to that, Tate. In addition to to Neil, some of the you know the world's largest brokerages like CBRE, Marcus and Millichap, they put out yearly market reviews, and it's not just multifamily; it'll be hospitality, office, retail, and it breaks down all pretty much all of the major primary cities, secondary, tertiary market cities and yeah. list what direction is population going in? What are the income, like all of the key metrics that you're going to be looking for when analyzing a market. And yeah. when I, you know, specifically was, you know, looking when I was in the Michael Blanc mentorship and we were talking about identifying our market, I spent 
days going over these and reviewing, okay, well, which market, you know, do I like, is this a place I'd want to go spend time? What are, you know, is it growing in population? Is it not for what reasons, who are the major, what is the economic drivers? You know, mm -hmm. is it diversified? So all of these things take into account why you want to be in a market. Yeah. Um, you know, for, for me personally, I said, I wanted to be in a market where I was going to be a bigger fish in a smaller pond. So I wasn't as interested in, you know, the Dallas, Texas or the Denver's. I wanted to go to a market where I could build relationships and get to know people and, and have coffee and, and build really strong foundations. So something, um, you know, you can also reach out to myself, Chelsea, C-H-E-L-S-E-A uh, at glequitygroup.com. And I'd be happy to also share some of those uh, market research, you know, annual surveys or excuse me, studies that come out um, to help you identify where you may want to invest. You picked Oklahoma City during the Michael Blanc program, and then you spent a lot of time and energy and effort on getting to know the market, going to the market, building relationships there. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you pick Oklahoma City? I actually picked Tulsa first and started my, my search in Tulsa and quickly learned that Tulsa was kind of the sister to Oklahoma City was the big brother being that Tulsa trades maybe about a quarter of the inventory that OKC does. But what led me there is I had been there sort of in a past life, I should say, on, on a business trip a couple of times. And I liked Tulsa a lot. I felt like it was kind of just a hidden gem of a place. I really liked the people. I thought it was a pretty city. And I started doing all my due diligence on it. It turned out to be just an absolute, you know, kind of gem, gem of a market, um, which then expanded to OKC. And mm -hmm. uh, I started putting a lot of time and effort into showing up absolutely regularly, like once a quarter to my market for years mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. I even did a deal there. Mm -hmm. And that foundation of building rapport with brokers and property managers and contractors. And, you know, the more people, you know, the better, because everybody shares a lot of information within these markets. So you'd be surprised what you can uncover about a per like a particular property, let's say, um, by speaking to a couple of different people, because they've likely seen it trade multiple times in their career. So mm -hmm. the more people you can know, the better. Um, however, you know, it, it also comes down to sometimes quality over quantity, like build, you know, of those brokers, maybe there's one or two that you really quick click with, spend mm -hmm. your time getting to really foster those relationships. And that's how you get the, the, the true off market deals. And yeah. I think that's, that's certainly what led to Greenlight success were our broker relations and off market deals. Yeah. And then as listener, many listeners know, our other market is Columbus, Ohio. Columbus, we picked because I am from Cincinnati, which is an hour and a half, two hours south and went to school in Ohio at Ohio University and know Columbus very well uh, and know, uh, know it well enough to know different neighborhoods and the major economic drivers there and, and have friends and family that live there and including a high school buddy that's a commercial broker. So it made a lot of sense to go to Columbus when we started to look at the analytics, right? The, the, the job drivers, the major employers, the gross median household income, population growth, immigration, right? Like those are really the important metrics you're looking at when you, when you're analyzing markets. And so Columbus has like Oklahoma city has probably more inventory than Columbus, but Columbus still has a lot of inventory and it is a market where it's hot enough that it is starting to attract institutional investors and you know, bigger coastal sources of funds, which makes it tougher for us to compete for deals sometimes, but we do whatever it takes to keep our deal flow going. And, and, uh, broker relations is a huge part of that. We, that's something we've at Greenlight have put a lot of effort into, and that actually gets into step three that I wanted to identify, uh, that we want to identify, which is, and this is, I think, you're doing this simultaneously really from the very beginning uh, with the steps one and two, but you want to identify your strengths, like, or you could call them superpowers and what you do really well, what part of this business you can see yourself thriving inside of mm -hmm. and start to identify also resources you have, right? Like relationships, uh, maybe funds, people with funds, broker 
friends, uh, you know, anybody in the industry. And what you do is you start to hone in on what you do well, develop what you do well, and start looking for partners that do the other things well and partners that you can leverage their resources and talents and team up and go get a, a deal. This is, we talk about, this is a team sport all the time. And it very much is that. So an example of that would be if you're really great at, at negotiation and deal analysis and underwriting and uh, talking to, to brokers, you might be an acquisitions uh, person where you're going out finding deals, getting them under contract. And then uh, maybe you're partnering up with capital raisers or somebody that is that has, you know, maybe your JV and on a small deal that somebody has a lot of money. One of the things that we did was we brought in uh, our sponsor that who's our current sponsor now on most of our deals. We brought him into a deal pretty much for doing nothing and except for advising us. And we wanted a good relationship with him, but we also wanted his knowledge and expertise. And, uh, and then we eventually needed him for the loan and he's also since become an investor. And I would highly recommend considering doing something like that, like going out and finding a deal, getting it under contract, getting control over it. And then you plug in the pieces that you don't have yourself to get it done. Right. Yeah. And I think to, to add to that is when you're first getting started, like most businesses, you wear all of the hats, right? Because you're learning the ins and outs and finding what you are truly good at. And there's going to be parts of the business that you don't love and that you do anyway. And that's like most things in life. And, you know, it's getting uncomfortable. And again, hiring coaches, hiring mentors. Um, I've worked additionally with a capital raising coach. So mm -hmm. there's people out there who are just capital raisers and who bring a lot of knowledge and of course, money, equity to a deal and they're invaluable. So, you know, as being kind of not to go back to the mentorship, but grow your network, go to meetup groups. Um, there's so many online forums, tell mm -hmm. people what you're doing or what you can offer, or what market you're in. Cause there's a lot of times that people are not investing in their backyard and they're looking for boots on the ground. Maybe yep. you're willing to do cold calling, um, yep. you know, you could be great at raising capital or you prefer yep. to sit behind a computer. Uh, you know, it's all, all part of the, the big picture. Yep. And, you know, I know at Greenlight, we, some of our roles overlap, but we kind of at this point have figured out, you know, where we, what lanes we're in and we, we thrive there. And, and, and yeah. that's really how you build the machine. Yeah. Yeah. That's so well said. And Chelsea just threw out some gems as far as different ways that you can be involved in a deal. Right. I would say the two main ways that are, are going to get you the most of the deal are finding the deals or finding the dollars, right? And that can be, you can find deals different ways. We're going to talk about that in, uh, in step five, but there's different ways to find deals. Chelsea mentioned cold calling. That's a great way. Chelsea also mentioned capital raising. That's huge. So the, those are the two pieces. The deals and the dollars are the two pieces that get the lion's share of the general partnership when the deal is structured. I would also yeah. kind of just end on the, on one last note, which is be willing to give up most of the deal on your first yeah. deal just to get in because yes. it will change the trajectory of where you're going. And you'd rather have a tiny piece of something than, than nothing at all. And what you're going to gain from experience on that will, you know, will come back tenfold. So yeah. find the right people bring your strengths and, you know, be willing to work really hard to get into that one and giving up, you know, a lot. That is such a good point. Um, it's such a good point. You're going to, this is the first of many deals that you're going to do. Right. And, and it's so key just to get the plane off the ground in this first one. And so you kind of do whatever it takes to do that. And sometimes that means giving up the lion's share of a deal, but look, you're still a general partner. You're still in every crucial conversation that goes on about the property. You're still in all the email chains and you're probably going to be a big part of asset management and, and managing the asset moving forward. By the way, as managing assets, asset management is another role that people have on their team and uh, have, have a need for. So if you've 
been in property management, for instance, and want to level up, like that's a, that's a good way to go too. So on that, we're going to keep this one short and sweet. We're going to come back next week, Chelsea and I will, with uh, steps four through six and getting to your first deal. And uh, we want to encourage you to, to, again, reach out to us anytime that uh, you have, you come up against an obstacle or um, you can't get your head around doing this business and you need a little like coaching. We offer uh, times in our schedule no strings attached. There's no expectation at all and nothing official. Uh, we just like talking to people and we like sharing our, what we, you know, our knowledge and our experience. And, and we're, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that have done a lot more deals than us and know a lot more than us. But I think we're at a point where we've crossed the threshold of the first deal for sure. And then we're now building a, a nice balance sheet. And, and I think we're doing a lot of things well and right. And, and we make mistakes all the time too. And so we'll share those with you. And we really will, like we've already talked about, we want to do episodes on the, the gnarly stuff that sometimes happens. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So with that listeners, thank you for listening to another episode of the apartment guys. If you enjoyed it, we love when to hear from you in the form of a rating or review uh, on Apple podcasts is the platform to do that. And uh, tune in next week. We'll go through steps four through six and hopefully get you a lot closer to your first deal. Thanks for listening, everybody. Take care. Thanks, Chels. Thank you.